Hi, so here's the next question. Uh, Jamie Weber uh, said, I'm interested in TPLO alternatives for highly angulated breeds like whippets. We have a border Kelpie whippet. That's an interesting cross. I'm a Kelpie person myself, so I think that would, I'd like to see a picture of that dog. That sounds interesting. With a cruciate injury that they said isn't a good candidate for a TPLO due to her knee structure. We have discussed a replacement and a couple of other options, but are interested in any alternatives. I mean, it's hard for me to answer that for you um, because I don't know what the knee structure of your dog looks like. Remember that the knee is not floating out there in space all by itself, and it's not only knee structure, but it's knee posture, so to speak. How is the knee being used by the animal? Is the hip on that side uh, working properly? You know, that's where we have a link between iliopsoas strains and um, CCL deficiencies. So. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by discussing a replacement because I'm pretty sure they're not doing knee replacements in dogs yet. So maybe a, um, using one of the older procedures where we try to mimic the original uh, ligament with like an over and under or patsama, I'm not sure, or a, a tightrope if maybe that's what you're talking about. Um, but you know, uh, core strength is very important for helping to uh, prevent some of these issues. And um, you know, doing regular body work and keeping those dogs as straight and as fluid and as flexible and get those fascial trains. We haven't had a chance to talk about fascial trains yet, but, you know, there's a, there's a huge explosion of fascial research that's starting to come out of Europe in the last couple of years. And there was just a study that got published in um, Denmark uh, about a month ago, and they actually were able to replicate the similar fascial trains in the horse as they have found in people. So it's only going to be a matter of time before we start to look at that with dogs. But fascial work is probably one of the more critical things in making sure that the body stays balanced and may relieve pressure uh, and may even actually help prevent uh, problems with CCL deficiencies. So, um, you know, I don't tend to see a lot of CCL problems in whippets. Uh, maybe it's because of the high angulation. Uh, maybe it's because of how they use themselves and how they run. Um, but, and actually I do a lot of Kelpies as well, being, being a Kelpie owner myself. Um, and I do Kelpies and I do cattle dogs and frankly I don't see a lot of CCL issues in those breeds either compared to some others. So um, to me it's just get back to basics. Keep the animal balanced, keep the animal straight, keep the animal fit, uh, give them good food that's not a pro-inflammatory diet that's very high in omega-6 fatty acids and usually I think that helps to prevent most issues. So hopefully that helps. Uh, Jamie also had another question and it was alternatives for puppies with cruciate injuries would be a great topic of discussion as well. Traditional TPLO isn't a good option from what I've read due to the cuts going through the growth plates. Uh, we have a surgeon in the area here that uh, we've actually had a couple of dogs that uh, one was a pit bull and she was very deformed because of starvation issues. She came through a rescue and we ended up doing TPLOs on, on both of her legs but we did quite a bit of management. We did prehab ahead of time until she got to the age that she was a good surgical candidate. So what I'd say with puppies is uh, just try to get back to basics, try to manage them as best you can with structural straightness, soft tissue work, uh, appropriate. I think when it happens in puppies, there's a vitamin C deficiency. And so I usually will blast those dogs with vitamin C. I'll actually take them up to where we start to get some diarrhea and then I'll start kind of caving it down. So the, or bringing it down a little bit. So the dose that I use on vitamin C is 25 milligrams per kilo. And then I'll start, uh, so if it ends up being like 750 milligrams, I might start a tiny bit lower, so at 500 milligrams, because diarrhea is the sign that tells you you've exceeded your vitamin C dose. And I know that, you know, animals are supposed to make vitamin C, but you know what? You give them vitamin C, I don't think they're getting enough, and you, or it gets consumed as an antioxidant. So what we'll do is we'll put them on, we'll start at a low dose of vitamin C, and we'll just start creeping up every couple of weeks, every 10 days to 14 days until we get to their dose, or sometimes I'll just keep going up until I get a little bit of sign of diarrhea and then I'll back down. And we've actually had a lot of our puppies with cruciate injuries do very well. Uh, we had one with a single cruciate that was completely due to falling out of the back of a truck. And um, that dog did actually very, very well uh, with just um, conservative management. And uh, we ended up doing, as she got to be a little older, we ended up later on when she's becoming more active and she was fully grown we ended up doing uh, over the under and uh, tightrope and she did pretty well. So I hope that helps Jamie. Hope those questions or hope that I hope I answered your questions.